Good afternoon, guys. It's Warkin bringing you a quick update on Bitcoin. Hope you guys are having a wonderful afternoon. Uh, we're looking at Bitcoin, the U.S. dollars, the four-hour chart on Coinbase. And last time we spoke, guys, <clears throat> pardon me, Bitcoin was sitting up in this zone here. We were watching very closely to see if we could penetrate up top of this 4,400. That did not happen. Price came up, was rejected, came back down, found a little bit of support at the top of uh, what was support start, or excuse me, what was resistance, started acting as support here and here, bounced back up, got a little hopeful, got rejected at the bottom of this zone again, and of course collapsed. Um, now, once it broke down below this $4,000 range, guys, it found a little bit of support. We can see right here, down into this order block just below there, right here, kind of the last stand before it would have fell um, down to at least 30. 3800 it was able to hold right here in fact if we go <clears throat> pull our fib go swing low swing high let me get right on there so you guys can see a little better there we go and right on then there we go. We can see that price came up, came down, had a perfect hit right there off the 618 FIB. And then, of course, um, moved sideways here, second tap off the 618 FIB, sideways for a couple more hours, and then took off. Uh, and when it did take off, guys, a nice bounce, pushed right back up above this 4150, um, what was acting as resistance, pushed above that 4150. And here we stand now, or here we sit now, I should say, sitting above 4150. So where are we heading next? Well, a couple things to consider, guys. We're going to be, of course, watching this order block uh right here we can see it was established uh support here then it broke through resistance 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 finally broke back down came up resistance 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 and broke back down so we're going to see this is a clearly a very strong resistance something that we have to push through and as i uh, showed you guys on my last update uh, i'll repeat it here for those of you that missed it if we go all the way up here and look at the larger structure go swing low swing high we can see that our fibonacci levels have lined up perfectly with what price has been doing in other words Pardon me. Initially, we uh, established the swing low down here. Price came up. Perfect hit off the three six. Or excuse me, off the two three six was rejected. Finally came up. Broke above the two three six. Perfect hit off the three eight two. Rejected. Push above three eight two slightly. Rejected. Three eight two. Three eight two. Rejected. And here we come again, testing the three eight two. Um. So we're going to need a decisive break. We have yet to decisively break above that three eight two foot bubble since it was established low back here. Um. And so what we're going to need is a decisive break above. In other words, we need a four hour candle that not just opens not just closes but both opens and closes above that 382 fib level that sits at about 4300 if we can get that at least get into this zone between 4400 and 4315 uh, with consolidation as solid break above with consolidation guys in my opinion that's going to be a rather bullish sign um, if we are unable to break above this zone guys we may trade within a range here but if we can't break above this zone guys that'll be a rather bearish sign and we're going to be watching very closely to see what happens uh, as it comes up and we're looking to test that area coming in looking at shorts now we're getting some very interesting things guys shorts are kind of remaining unstacked or excuse me unchanged here uh, over the last uh, so we had a little bit of a rise here in the last eight hours they've dropped off but nothing too significant on shorts I mean really uh, I mean really since uh, November the 28th just been kind of staying within this range here but longs Come up here and look at longs longs had a had a decent drop kind of kind of dropped off fairly not very significantly, but significantly enough to get my attention, to get a lot of people's attention. And this happened on a rise. Um, now, typically, again, I've, I've told you guys in the past, uh, quite a few updates ago, uh, that retail investors are getting smarter. There are some retail investors in here, although a lot of these are professional traders. Uh, we know that there's some retail investors in here. How do we know that? Well, we know that volume still remains above that three to four billion. Uh, remember, when it was about three to four billion, that was just pure, mostly guys, some retail, but mostly uh, professional traders. We know that it's above that and remained above that, which tells me that uh, there are retail investors in here trading. And retail investors are getting smarter. In other words, they're taking profit. So when price rose here, uh, over the last 12 hours, what happened with longs? Longs dropped off the board over the last 12 hours. That's significant. I mean, they're not chasing price. They're actually taking their profit, which is smart. Um, and so what we're seeing is we're starting to see, even though shorts have not spiked um, really, they, uh, as I said, kind of remain relatively unchanged. Longs, have, longs, kind of, at least in the last 12 hours, 12 to 16 hours, have dropped off the board. Um, now, again, not not at a very significant rate, but still not at, at a noticeable rate. Um, and so that gap between longs and shorts is getting uh, is getting a little wider. Um, and as you know, as I always say, this is a zero sum game. For someone to make money, someone has to lose money. So if you're a market maker here, if you're pushing price in one direction or another, if shorts are outpacing longs by about 20, 25 
25 percent uh which is the case right about now not about mostly about 20 percent which is the case right about now guys it's gonna it, it makes sense that they would want to bring price up because they're trying to they're, they're trying they're going on a stop punt trying to liquidate those short positions so where are those short positions sitting i believe a lot of their a lot of short positions uh their stop losses are sitting right up here uh, more than likely sitting at around maybe 4,600 ish somewhere thereabouts. There's also a lot of um, uh, uh, short positions. A lot of their a lot of their stop losses are more than likely sitting right above here, right above this order block. The board, a lot of them entered a short right here, so they're putting their stop losses more than likely right here. And if we if we look at our Fibonacci levels, I showed you guys swing high, swing low. We can see at each one of these resistance areas that I had drawn off, um, that is a major Fibonacci level. So the bottom of this area here, around 4,300, 4,315 of this zone I had blocked off, that's that 382 Fib right here at this resistance line that I had drawn right here at about 43, or excuse me, at about 4570, uh, the top of this order block right here, guys, that's the 50 Fib level. So again, a, uh, a, a very a very relevant Fibonacci level. If we look above that, um, I, I had drawn this out. Um, as I said, uh, I, let's see, that was, I drew, I drew that out on, I think, November the 20th, somewhere thereabouts, guys. And of course, that turned out to be right there, that perfect 618 Fib level, the top of which sits at about 40, uh, 4820, somewhere thereabouts, guys. So I, I think market makers are going to have to drive price at least above this 4570 zone just to liquidate um, a lot of uh, a lot of these short positions. Definitely in uh, at least to this zone, the 618 Fib level, at least right here uh, to liquidate those short positions. And so what we're going to be watching, guys, is I'm very skeptical that the bottom is in. I'm very skeptical of this latest rise. Um, I, I mean, if we get above this uh, 382 Fib decisively, that'll obviously be a little more bullish, at least short term. But uh, I'm going to start to get a little more uh, a little more optimistic for a, a, a more sustainable sustainable uh, rise here. I don't want to call it, um, I, you know, right now this is maybe a, a small bull run in the midst of a bear run, uh, or excuse me, in the midst of a bear market, I should say. Um, and I think this thing might have a little bit of legs if we can get above this 618 Fib level, as I've showed you guys in the past. So if we can get above this zone here, let's call it 4,900 to get out of this golden pocket. If we can get above 4,900, guys, I'm going to start to get a lot more optimistic. Until we do, I'm going to be looking for a very possible, even if we get a little short squeeze here, even if they go on a a, a, a stop hunt for short positions. I'm going to be watching this area right here at about 48.20 for that reversal. And I do think that if you're looking to enter a short position, that right here at about 48.20 would be a very logical place to do it. But again, guys, I would be very careful. I would only do that if volume is relatively weak. Um, and of course, we're going to have to wait and see the structure. And I'm going to have to wait and see how many short positions are getting liquidated and what long positions are doing. These are all things you have to consider before just entering into a position here, guys. But the way things are looking right now, just kind of eyeballing it, this area right here would be a decent area for a reversal to bring price right crashing right back down at about 48.20, somewhere thereabouts. And again, if we can break above this zone decisively, break above, call it 48.50, um, 4,900, somewhere thereabouts, a decisive break above there. In other words, by decisive, I mean a four hour candle opening and closing above 4,850, 4,900. Then I'm gonna get a lot more optimistic, a lot more bullish, um, at least in the short term here. Uh, so these are things we're gonna be watching here, guys. And for now, we need to see if we can get above this 4,300 to 4,315 zone. If we get rejected again, come back down into this zone again, um, I, I don't think this bottom will hold. We had a very decent support right here, as I pointed out, guys, but I do think if we come back down for a retest, I think this. This is a very, very likely break, and we'd be coming down to at least 3,800 to 3,600 zones. So just keep an eye on that. <clears throat> All right, looking at our um, exponential moving averages and moving averages, guys, we can see that uh, um, yesterday price, or excuse me, yesterday's candle did close back below this eight-day EMA. This is on the daily chart, by the way, guys, that we're looking at the daily chart here. Uh, yesterday's uh, candle did close below this eight-day EMA. Today, we've had a little bit of a rise. Obviously, I'd like to see today's candle close at least above this eight-day EMA. If that happens, we may, um, you know, this thing may have some legs. We may get a little more upside. If we close back below the eight-day EMA, guys, um, again, I'm going to get a little more bearish and I'm going to start, uh, we're going to start watching down below, watching that uh, that $3,800 $3, uh, support area that we had just, uh, that we had just referred to. All right, finally, guys, zooming out here on the monthly chart. 
Uh, again, this is a monthly chart, guys. I told you guys last time that I wanted to see the monthly candle, uh, November's monthly candle here. I wanted to see it at least close within this order block that was set uh, back in September, October of 2017. It did not. It closed below this order block here, guys. It actually closed at about uh, 39.65, somewhere thereabouts, guys. Um, and so that is, and then of course we can see that the that price is coming back up, and we can see that this zone here at about 4,300 is acting as resistance. Um, and of course, anytime we break below a support, we come back for a retest and it acts as resistance. If we get a strong rejection, obviously that's a very, very bearish sign. So again, this is why it's extremely important that we do break back above into this zone, break at least above this 4,300 decisively. Again, not by a wick, but a decisive break above, above uh, 4,300 if this thing is to have any legs. If we get a strong rejection here, guys, we may have a lot more downside to go. And at that point, I'm going to be eyeballing um, this zone down here here, which sits at um, about uh, that $3,000 range down to about $2,500. Again, doesn't mean that has to happen, just means that uh, if we do get a strong rejection here, that's a very real possibility. And until we do break back above this zone, back above 4,300 decisively, again, not by a wick, but a decisive break above into that 4,300 to $4,400 range, guys, um, it, you know, the, the bears are still in control, even though we have a little bit of an uptick here. So again, I don't want to spread any FUD, but I just want to say, you know, the, the monthly candle does look at the moment is still looking very, very bearish. Um, but again, this this could change. What we need to see, obviously, we need to keep an eye on volume. In fact, let me refresh this so I have the most current volume here. We need to keep an eye on volume. Right now, we're sitting at about 5.6 billion. That's a little bit of a downtick for what we've had over the last few days. We've been about between six and seven billion. Um, we're down below that today, guys. So, you know, really the fact that volume is dropping off is not a great sign. Um, that being said, keep an eye on it because if we do get that surge in volume, that spike in volume, guys, and it could literally happen at any time. We know that there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes. We know there's a lot of discussion right now with the SAC, uh, excuse me, the SEC discussing ETF approval, et cetera, et cetera. Um, institutional money, you know, they, they are scratching at the bit to get in, but they want a good safe on-ramp. And if that, if, if even if we got a good rumor coming out that suggests that there will be um, ETF approval in a very relatively short amount of time, you're going to see people jumping in on that. Um, and of course, the first thing you're going to watch is the volume. When volume starts spiking massively, and we start breaking above those resistance areas, guys, that's when you're going to know that uh, that, uh, that we have very there's a very real possibility that we've hit bottom. But until we get that spike in volume, guys, this is just not sustainable. Um, so anyway, make sure you guys keep an eye on that. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap things there. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please let me know in the comments section below. As always, would appreciate an upvote if you have enjoyed this content. Until next time, guys, please trade safe. Take care of yourselves. This is working. Signing out.